Hello and welcome. This is the last in our series on Paul's prayers and this morning we're coming on to 2 Thessalonians 1 and reading from verse 11. So Paul says this, with this in mind we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, Paul prays consistently and persistently. Once again, he prays for what is really important and of spiritual and eternal benefit. Once again, his prayers are deep. He prays a number of things for the Thessalonian Christians in these verses, all of which are tied together and to his previous requests. First, he prays for God to make them worthy of his calling. God has called us, as he did those early Christians in Thessalonica, to know him, to live in relationship with him, to serve him and witness to him, and to be part of his family and his eternal kingdom. We don't deserve this because we're sinful, rebellious people and we've failed continually to live his way. And despite his work in us, though we may be, and hopefully are, better than we were, we still fall a long way short. So in that sense, we will never, this side of resurrection, be worthy of his calling. But what Paul is praying and hoping for is that the Thessalonian Christians will please God by their growth in faith and love and by their actions, and that these will bring him glory. And the same applies to us. Secondly, Paul prays for God to bring to fruition their every desire for goodness and their every deed prompted by faith. As they seek to live out their faith and seek to grow and to love and serve God and one another, Paul prays that God will bring fruit out of this. I'm sure that we all want our lives to be fruitful, but the fruit that we look for is often different to what God is looking for. And we want the fruit now, whilst for God, time is less significant. If we want our lives to be fruitful for God, we need to be open to that and we need to ask and allow him to bring the fruit that he wants in his timing. Which may well mean that we don't get to see some of it. And that may be hard, but let's bear in mind that the fruit is his, not ours. And if we're serving him sincerely, that service and his glory needs to be enough for us. There's always a danger that we're looking out for our own reward and our own glory from what we do. We need to keep a check on our motivation. Thirdly, Paul prays that the name of Jesus may be glorified in them and they in him. This is Paul's stated aim and the reason for his earlier prayers. This can be a challenge for us though. We live in a society where self is elevated above all else. We're encouraged to look out for number one. People want to promote themselves and gain recognition, respect, honour and glory for themselves and there's always a danger that that will rub off on us. It's part of human nature. Look at me, how good I look, how good I am, what I've done. But for the Christian this needs to be laid aside and it's the glory of Jesus we should seek. For the name of Jesus to be glorified in us we need to remember that we're his ambassadors and all we do reflects on him. So our behaviour, lifestyle, attitudes and character all reflect on Jesus. People will judge him by what they see in us. Let's strive to grow and to bring him glory in the way we live. But Paul also prays for them to be glorified in him, because God promises us great reward in eternity if our lives are faithful and fruitful, we'll be rewarded for that. Again, it's all tied to, into growth. So as we finish this series, let me ask, are you content as you are in your faith and your life and your service to God and your love for him and others and your witness to Jesus? Or do you want to grow? You may well know John Newton's quote, I'm not what I ought to be, 
I am not what I want to be. I am not what I hope to be in another world. But still, I am not what I once used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. May we celebrate what we've grown to be by God's grace. And may we seek in his grace to grow further. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that by your work in us, you would make us worthy of your calling, that you would bring to fruition our desires for goodness and our works prompted by our faith in you. And Lord, above all, may you be glorified in us. By your grace. Amen. Do join me again on Monday as we begin a new series looking at the messages of some of the Psalms. See you then. Bless you.